Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be drawing a real-time tutorial of a dog's eye in pastel pencils. Um, I will be showing you all the different pencil brands I use, all the different colours I use, and personally how I would go about um, drawing this dog eye using all the tips and things I'd learn whilst doing pet portraits. So I will use my putty rubber to rub or press out my graphite lines. Um, the graphite lines work really well for me. Um, I have got another video on how I transfer my photo references onto um, my paper. However, if I can just make them a slightly bit more fainter, then that will work perfect. Just so they don't show through or make an indent in my drawing. Um, however, pastels, because they're quite thick, um, or they lay down quite thickly as compared, like compared to a coloured pencil, um, it is quite easy to cover them, especially compared to coloured pencils. So the first pencil I'm going to go in and use is the French Dark Grey from the Derwin Pastel Pencils. Um, I, I'm not going to use black just yet because it is quite harsh. Uh, so I'm literally just going to go in with the dark grey and really, really briefly just map out all the dark areas and then I'll go and do the same with all the light areas as well. This definitely takes a lot of looking back and forth. Um, just to really just try and figure out where everything is. Um, and for me, this just really helps. As I actually work in pastels, um, a thing that I tend to do, which I think is just a thing that I personally decide to do, um, is mainly block in almost large amounts of colour when I'm doing like a base or something. Um, I block in large amounts of colour using circular motions as, a, as opposed to just back and forth motions. This is because they can be quite scratchy, um, especially when there isn't like a base underneath it or anything. Um, and Circular Motions just puts down a really nice even coat of the pastel. I also find the waterline to be definitely one of the trickiest parts because I just feel like there's so many lines and it's really difficult to just figure out what line is what. And also, as far as like the really, really, really tiny white highlights in eyes go, um, I tend to not really worry about leaving space for them. Uh, purely because with pastels, you can layer pastel on pastel so easily that I'll just get around to doing that probably right at the end of the portrait, um, where I add in all of the really fine details and all the white highlights.
So here you can see me doing the circular motions. Um, and the graphite, the white graphite lines, you can see are showing through slightly. Um, however, once I work more on this waterline uh, later on, I will, it will definitely get rid of those. So I don't tend to worry about uh, the graphite lines too much. And I'm just gonna really briefly also fill in the middle of the eye. Um, I am not very uh, knowledgeable about different eye parts, so excuse me if they are not the most technical terms. However, I always try, especially if there's a reference photo with um, really like intricate reflection in it, I always try and uh, treat that as like a whole separate like photo almost, a whole separate part of the eye. Okay, so I'm pretty content with all the darks that I've now blocked in. Um, I might go a little bit more up here. And again, you can see the graphite lines, but they will disappear when I get more into the portrait. Right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and now I'm going to actually, I think I'm gonna use a light pink color for blocking in the highlights, just like I've just done with all the darker tones. Uh, this is Flesh from the Derwent Pastel Pencil range. Uh, I'm just gonna do the exact same um, and just pick out, this one, there won't be as many highlights but just pick out the really, uh, the lighter colors as such. And this part especially, I do actually get really bad neck ache, uh, just because my head is darting back and forth so often to see whereabouts I'm drawing. You get used to that. Okay, so as I said, there really isn't that many highlights just compared to um, all the shadows that I put in, or the dark colours. But this also just gives me a nice indication of whereabouts all the lighter parts of the eye are. And just gives me a bit more of an understanding um, in putting it all together. Okay, so this part I would now probably start adding colour um, and 
I normally go for the technique where I just focus on one part of the eye um, as opposed to bringing up the whole drawing to the same level. So I'm going to um, start with uh, two, seven, three. I forgot these don't have um, colour names. Two, seven, three of the Pip Pastels by Faber Castell. Um, it's just the dark grey colour. Um, it's a cold grey. Or is it a warm grey? No, it's cold grey. And we're going to focus on... <laughs> it's a warm grey. <laughs> uh, we're going to focus on the small white of the eye. Um, as it says in the, the name, white of the eye, people assume that it is just white. However, I find that this is the part where most of the colours, like there is a lot of colours in this part of the eye. Um, and just putting that down for a second, I'm going to use just a dark, um, okay this will do, this is Seal from the Dermal Pastels, just to block off um, the brown in it, well, is it a tear duct? The dogs have tear ducts, I don't know. There you go, that just makes it a bit more clearer. Um, on where I should be drawing. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with uh, Graphite Grey from the Derwent Pencils. I can't find it. <laughs> there it is. No, it's not. <laughs> where is it? There it is, okay. Um, just because there's the white here, which is quite light, but then more close to the black, there's a quite a dark grey colour, almost brownie. So we're just going to carefully block that in as well. It's actually kind of got a bit of a greeny hinge to it. Um, so I'm going to go in with um, Brown Earth, which is just kind of like a light brown colour uh, from the Derwent Pastel Pencils. Anything that I hold that's red is Derwent. Um, anything that I hold that is a light wood will be the Pit Pastels. Um, anything that's got a coloured um, pencil will be the Carbothellos by Satiblo. Um, but anyway, we're just going to go in with this dark brown. And actually, whilst I'm at it, this is the perfect colour for this dark bit over here. So I'm just going to fill that in whilst I've got it in my hand. Okay, um, and then normally the actual white of the eye will have like a really light, warm uh, grey, but also like a pinky colour to it as well. So I'm gonna, um, what colour should I use? I think I might actually just use white. I'm gonna use white, um, Derwent Titanium White just to pick out the highlights in the white of this eye. Um, and also, I don't know what the technical term for this is at all, but when you look really closely, it is not like a smooth color at all. It is actually like, I don't even know how to describe it, almost like layers of color in the eye. Um, so I would not make whatever you draw a smooth white or a smooth colour at all. Um, you really need that like variation of colours in it. Um, this is the Carthabello, Carbothello, or 
726 dark grey and this is just going to go right in the top corner and I'm also going to use this just to slightly blend in that um, brown earth colour that we I put in a minute ago and this is also going to come down because obviously the closer down it gets to the eye the darker it will get and then also a little bit in here Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go in with 132 from the pastel range. It's a like a fleshy pink colour. Um, and as I said, a lot of the whites in dogs' eyes will have like a pinky tone to it. So I'm just gonna pop that in, and then I'm gonna go in with a dark grey again, just to. make the darker bits as dark as they need to be. <sighs> what I love about pastels as well is that you can choose completely how much pressure you're going to apply. Um, so even if you just need the tiniest bit of something to be just a tiny bit darker or lighter then you can put a tiny amount of pressure down. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with the uh, Carbon Black Derwent Pastel and we're just going to start putting in the black um, shadows in the dog. Now, this pastel pencil, the Carbon Black from the Derwent, isn't the darkest black by any means of a pastel pencil you can buy. Um, I will most likely go over this in my Faber Castell Pit Pastel <laughs> Black because I find that a million times darker. Um, and I also find that, especially when you're doing a dog's eye, you really need to create the sense of depth and contrast and that will really help you getting your portraits a lot more realistic. Um, so I always try and find the darkest pencils I can find and also the lightest pencils, so like the lightest whites and well not the lightest, the brightest whites. And then I'm also going to really roughly outline the edge of the middle of the eye as well because it kind of all blended into the same colour there. <sighs> Sorry about the blowing, I mean pastels create dust and I can't have the dust on there whilst I draw. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go in with the black pit pastel which I don't have much left of and I'm not sure if you can tell but it is just such a richer black compared to the Derwent pastel. I'm going to actually put this in a pencil extender um, and if you do not know what pencil extender is they are wonderful. Um, so I at the moment have this polychromo in one. Oops. Um, but it's just for really small pencils that you want to get a bit of life out of because um, obviously they become too small to hold so you just wiggle it in and then put the cap on and tighten it up and then you have like a whole as such a pencil to draw with again so these are wonderful especially as I think I only have one of these left <laughs> I'd love to just get a new one out but I do not have any of them
Okay, so then we're going to now focus on uh, this brown portion. It's like a really quite a light sepia colour. Um, and so I'm going to use the 283 Pit Pastel Pencil, um, which I love this colour. It's like a really vibrant, um, like a really rusty brownie orange colour. And I just haven't found another pastel pencil like it. And especially with dogs as well, any dogs that really have like a chestnutty um, or like rusty kind of coat colour. This is my go-to pencil for a colour like that. So I've just kind of blocked in the base with that colour. And then I'm going to go in with um, Burn Earth again. Or Brown Earth, not Burn Earth. Brown Earth, um, which has a slightly more yellow tone to it and just kind of starts to blend that out into the black. And then we're gonna go, and then I'm gonna go one darker and use chocolate um, from the Derwent pastels that I can't find at all. <laughs> There it is. Uh, and this is just quite also a dark brown again. This is actually more of like a purpley kind of brown colour. I'm just going to use that. And then right, there's the tiniest, faintest line right on the edge here that's quite light and there's obviously some light hitting it so I'm just going to use the flesh pastel colour from Derwent just to really really finely outline that. And then we're going to go in with Seal from the Derwent and just carry on looking at my reference. I'm also just going to separate the white of the eye and this colour a little bit more. And I feel like I've lost a little bit of the orangey colour. So I'm going to do a very bold move and use um, the 113 from the Pit Pastels, which is a very orange colour, but as I said, you can really choose the amount of pressure you use. So for this, I'm going to use the tiniest amount of pressure just to really get those oranges in. And then I'm going to go back in with uh, the rusty brown colour and then just blend that in slightly. And then one more thing, I'm going to go in with the 177 from the Pit Pastels and just bring in just a little bit more contrast. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. I say one more thing and I'm just going to do the tiniest line of pink. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I'm also, I've just looked again and I feel like my line next to the um, black, sorry, I can't find a colour I want. Where is it? Um. 
completely offset. Okay, and then just because I've realised that this bit here, um, I think I've made it a little bit too messy, so I'm just going to go in with my Stativo Carbothello, just a really light grey, and just make the line just a bit more crisp um, between the black and the grey. And adding in some quite bright highlights as well can also just make it look a little bit more realistic. <sighs> okay, cool. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'm also just going to add in the tiniest little highlights. I'm just going to take titanium white from the Derwin and there's just some tiny little dots here. Um, as I said, and try and finish the bits as I go through them instead of doing one part and raising. The only way I can describe it is like bringing up the whole drawing to that level. So just like that. Okay. It's a tiny bit down here. And the tiniest little white highlights in an eye of a dog is what is going to be make it look wet and just realistic and one of the best things you can probably do. Okay, so we're now going to focus on the bit next to the sepia. Um, and we're going to take my black pit pastel and just kind of line the bottom here. And I'm also just going to fill in this because that's quite dark as well. <sighs> and with pastels, I always tend to work dark to light. So even though the bit that I'm now colouring in is more of like a purpley brown, um, it also has black in it. So I'm going to put a base of black on it and then I'll come back and put in those hairs but for now I just want to get the black put down there you go I'm also just gonna make that a little bit grey as well cool so now I'm gonna do as I just said and I'm going to use a colour called burn Carmain, I think it's pronounced. Carmain from Derwin. It is P610 um, and it is like this really nice purpley brown colour and for that I'm going to start mimicking the hairs. Um, I'm not going to focus on hair too much in this one. This is more just the dog's eye. Um, however, there is these small tiny little hairs in the corner of his eye. So just get those in. Um, and when I draw hair, I will do another tutorial on this, but when I draw hair, um, I make a range of really light hair strokes. So they're not, you can't really see them, but they're there um, and also quite bold ones. And I'm sure you'll see that as I go through um, this either this one or the hair tutorial. But I'm just gonna go in with my 273 gray pit pastel and start to bring out the lighter hairs really faintly because if you don't press faintly then um, your hairs won't be fine. So I'm gonna pop those in and then press a tiny bit harder just to get the really light ones out and then I'm now going to focus on this bit which is actually a big shine so 
for the quite big reflections that definitely has some blue in. Um, and I can't actually tell you what this brand is. But there's not another colour like it that I have. Um, it is the bright, oh, something design pastel pencil in A840. And it's like a really, oh, 51, sorry. And it's a really light blue colour. But I'm just going to pop that just into the reflection. We'll work on the actual shape of the reflection in a second. But um, because it's quite small detail and this is a blunt pencil. <laughs> I'm just going to put that in there like that. And then simply we're just going to go in with the uh, carbon black Derwent and just shape the reflection. Um, although this is hard because it's such a tiny little piece. But just try the best you can and there you go. And then just to bring out the reflection because it's quite a bright reflection in his eye, I'm just going to use titanium white and just really carefully do the tiniest little circle motions just to bring out the white. <sighs> Although I feel like in doing that I've just completely got rid of the blue, so <laughs> I'm going to go back in with the blue really carefully. Um, actually, in this instance, there isn't too much of a difference between the blue and the white, just because it is so um, light. So I'm actually going to use um, a coloured pencil, although I suppose I don't know if it really is a full colour pencil. It's actually a watercolour pencil. It's the Grand Arche, um Museum Aquarelle watercolour pencil and it's just a really bright white as you can see. Oh, there we go. Perfect for something like this. Um, and it's just the nicest thing to bring bright white highlights. And I'm also going to really finely press on a few of these hairs because the white is also on there. And I do pat my drawings um, a little bit just to smooth out the pastel, but I never do it to much of an extent. Um, I'm actually going to quickly just come back in here because there's a dark bit that it seems we've not got. I'm just going to bring back the lightness with the pink. I will say that the way that I draw um, in pastel is probably not the most professional way to do it. Like, obviously, I probably will make mistakes and do things that may not be right, but I am 100% self taught. Um, I've never taken a class or anything, so this is generally just things that I've picked up along the way. Uh, and I haven't been drawing in pastel that long either. <sighs> okay. I'm just going to take my... Oh, these are all too blunt for this. I need to really sharpen them. Uh, I've just lost the wipe, so I'm just going to pop that back in again. I do repeat quite a lot, which is not the best thing to do at all. Um, I put the colour in, do something to take the colour out and then put the colour back in. Would not recommend, but... Hey ho. Alright, so I'm really just trying to tweak this now a little bit. Um, I'm just going to use flesh pink just to bring out a couple more hairs because I just don't feel like they're 
as light as they should be. There we go. Nice, and then I'm going to, I think, oh, just add a tiny bit of brown using brown earth again, just to the side. Once again, as I said, I go back and forth all the time. <sighs> Changing up different things and Okay, so I'm pretty happy with, oh, except one thing I've just seen, just this bit is supposed to be a little bit more darker. I can't seem to leave this reflection alone. Okay, there we go. So cool, I'm pretty happy with all of that. Um, and then I think we're gonna go on to doing the actual coloured part of the eye, I guess you'd say. Um, now I've got all of that done, which <laughs> I'm still tweaking, very sorry. <sighs> okay, so you can see the waterline kind of like a slope down. So I'm just gonna block that in black, just so I have the idea. Um, the very edge of a dog's eye is going to almost certainly be black. So I normally just block in all of that color. Uh, don't go too far inwards though, because uh, this bit is definitely not black at all. It's like this beautiful orangey brown colour. So I'm going to take another bold step before I just do this. Okay, I just can't seem to leave that bit alone. Okay, it just looks weird because it's orange. And, um, and I'm going to literally put in the brown, the orange. Uh, this is a orange pit pastel. And I'm gonna bring out the really, really light orange areas. Um, just so I can always work around them, I guess you'd say. And this also coincides with the uh, pink highlights I put in a minute ago. And it's also quite bright up here as well. I'm going to completely forget about uh, the reflection in the middle at the moment. And just purely focus on getting this orange middle part done. Also quite bright down here. Um, personally, I never do eyes this big on this big of a scale. So this is quite different for me. I usually do them on a very small scale. Alexa, set my timer for 13 minutes. 13 minutes. Starting now. Okay, and then I'm going to use this um, rusty orange pit pastel again uh, that I mentioned earlier, the 238, which is perfect for this kind of colour. And I'm just going to start just kind of blocking in, I suppose, the mid-tones of the eye 
and I'd also look really carefully um, how it is where two colours meet because sometimes it can be a really crisp line and sometimes they can just blend into each other. Like here it blends in but for example like down here it is a really crisp line um, and you don't want to over blend anything or not blend anything at all so just keep that in mind. Once again, I'm using really light circular motions, just to kind of build it up. That is throwing me off slightly because um, none of this is actually pure black yet. But there is a really faint orange, uh, brown line there. I'm just going to pop in before I put the black in. And then a bit there. And this is all quite dark around here. It's like a dark grey colour. So we'll add the grey to that later. And then up here is like a weird light grey blue colour. So I'm just going to steer clear of that for the moment. And just keep blending everything together. Um, I'm actually, once I've done this, which I think I'm pretty much done, I'm actually going to go in with a bit of yellow. Um, and sometimes it is okay to exaggerate the colours. Um, I do this personally quite a lot, just to get the most realistic colours you can possibly get the most realistic portrait you can possibly get. Uh, this is another one of those odd brands, the Design Holland. Uh, this is 47. It's just like a, I mean, I was going to use this one. No, not that one. <laughs> I was going to use this one from the Pit Pastels, but you can see how much of a kind of darker yellow this is. Um, and this is more like a lime yellow, which obviously would look a bit odd. Um, and this, I'm just going to pick out the very lightest areas um, because the actual reference photo does not have much yellow in at all. But as I said, it's okay to follow your gut and just kind of... Sometimes you just need to put in colours that maybe aren't in the reference photo but you know that bringing them in will just bring it to life so much more. Okay. Right, so I'm now going to go in with... Um, half this is just me umming. Okay, this one, it's a 179 Pit Pastel. It's almost like a... Uh, kind of like an beige a dark beige uh, a kind of a light brown color and I'm gonna pretty much use this just to fill in any blank areas that will eventually become darker or um, just stay the same <laughs> but I'm still really looking back and forth at my reference just to make sure that I'm following it And I'm actually also using this just to block out. There's quite like a definitive line here 
um, of the layers of the eye, as I said, so I'm just kind of blocking that in a little bit. Um, I have actually had quite a lot of struggle with this pencil. Um, I don't know why, but it doesn't show up as good. So this stage isn't even like remotely adding in any details. It's purely just blocking in all different colors. Um, and really just focusing on the layers of the eye, as I said. Okay. So for me, it's actually throwing me off quite a bit because it's almost way too light compared to the reference. So I'm gonna make a bit of a bold move and go in with chocolate from the Derwent pastel and just really start to lock in all the darks. Um, especially like down here, this is throwing me off quite a bit as well. best thing about pastel for me is that you can go over as much as you wish um, with light colours, with darker colours, which is something that you struggle to do with colour pencil. It's very hard to get um, white colours on top of dark colours. But pastel is just such a lovely medium. And it's definitely one of my favourites. Okay, so I'm just going in with the chocolate and I know I said I'm not going to focus on doing much around here, but this is all dark, so it doesn't matter too much. And then, as I said, some bits are blended, some bits aren't, so you just want to be really careful with what you're blending. So just gonna use this colour just to come up around here because it's the exact colour I need. <laughs> I seem to do this a lot as well. Um, I think it's just saving myself more time than anything. Um, and I'm also just gonna go in, obviously I've got my French grey uh, shadow but I'm going to go in with the Pip Pastel black and this is when it's going to start to give it real depth um, and you'll start to really see it come together almost I suppose maybe not so much but so this is actually all blended down here so I'm just going to smudge it out slightly just so I know um, but then down by the water and it's completely sharp. And as I did mention, there's a really odd like light brown line. So I put the brown in there. I'm just gonna go over the black so it's a tiny bit darker, but definitely leave that in there. Um, and then I mean, the line's pretty crisp all around here. So I'm just gonna add that in. And then just blend it out. Because this is all in complete darkness, so. Not so much around here, so I'm just gonna leave that, but definitely all up here.
and then I'd even say it's actually a bit sharper than what I've put it here as well so there we go okay that makes me feel better it just kind of it's starting to come a bit more together now um with the dark water around the eye all right and now i'm going to use um a cold gray and just block in this weird bluey gray bit up here just to get rid of the paper really Okay, so I'm going to try and put a bit of red into this eye um, to make the real deep red colour. However, I know um, before I even start it, I'm going to struggle because I don't have those kind of colours in pastel. So I think I'm going to approach it and literally just find the darkest red pastel pencil I own which is not going to be very dark at all. Uh, this is the 31 from the design brand, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, this is going to be so bright. But I think it's going to be more of putting this under um, to create like a kind of a hue, so this does look a little bit insane. <laughs> However, hopefully it will turn out all okay. Um, I do have a m much, much, much bigger range of coloured pencils and I have about a million colours that would do this amazing, but there's always a, a smaller range of pastel pencils compared to coloured so you just kind of got to work what you have with what you have um i'm gonna go in with burnt carmine again if i can find it um there it is and i'm just gonna go basically over this red really looking at where the pencil needs to go. Um, I'm also just going to blend it into this bit here. And then I'm actually not going to cover that in the burnt carmine. I'm going to grab um, brown earth. Oh no, I'm going to grab raw umber from the Derwent and actually go over it in that because this is more of a light brown colour. Um, but even though you will not see the red in the final eye like at all, it still is there really and it's more of just like an undertone. Okay, and then I'm going to take the colour that's known as the Rusty Brown Pit Pastel um, and just start bringing that in, constantly checking where it needs to go. It is quite a shame that I can't and I know that I'm not going to be able to like create that really rich, dark, ready colour. Um, but that's purely just down to the fact that I just don't have the colours that would make that. Um, or I'd really struggle to. So I'm just going to do my best with this colour and browns and probably quite a lot of purple as well. 
Um, so I'm going to take seal. Um, which is a really nice colour. It's again quite like a purpley brown. And just start to blend it, but it's not like your average blending, it's more creating the layers, as I said. Oh, this colour has come to my rescue. So this is all quite dark here. And then we're just gonna blend it out or put in those little dots. Uh, there's quite a lot of lighter and darker brown dots in an eye. So just focus on those. Um, however, when you do do the dark, be very careful to not go overly dark and start, you know, just going over everything that you've more or less just done. Um, over here needs to be a lot, a lot darker. And over here needs to be really dark. So I'm not sure if you can see in the camera, but over here, um, it does need a lot more lighter tones, but um, it's got the red underlay and over here it hasn't. And it really has just brought in just that dark red color. Um, so I'm gonna actually do the same and go in with the red again. Um, just over here. But quite lightly, I'm not pressing down hard or anything. Just very light. <sighs> and then going with Burnt Carmaine again. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, lovely purpley brown. Blowing it all out the way as you go. Uh, the pastel dust actually really doesn't bother me that much. Um, I'm lucky enough to not have anything like asthma or anything. And I don't find it that bad really. Um, but I know that some people do. So just watch out if you do start using pastel. Because obviously it does create dust. Um, I'm just going to go into carbon black and just try and darken this area because it is near to black but not completely black. <sighs> I really like dark brown. Um, I'm going to go in with seal again, I think. Might be a tiny bit light, but we will see. Can't find it <laughs> as usual. Oh no, that's okay. Um, and then we're gonna go in with this color, 179 from the Pit Pastels and start to kind of introduce the light all around here because I did slap red all over it. Um, something like this really just takes layers, um, layers and layers and layers. It's the best advice I could probably give to somebody. She loads and loads of layers. <laughs> uh, but you also need a paper to take the layers on as well. Um, I'm using pastel mat um, from the Coran Dash pastel mat. Uh, it's beautiful paper. It takes a while to get used to. I hated it when I first started using it. I was going with the burnt carmine again. 
to do the bottom or to darken up the bottom. Um, it took me a while to get used to it. I hated it at first. I tried it, hated it, didn't use it for like a few months. And I was like, I really want to get to use this, you know. So I stuck with it and kept going. And now it is all I use for every commission. Um, granted, it is quite expensive. However, it is such a lovely texture to work on. So I'm actually quite happy with how this is going. Um, apart from one bit, I don't think this is not dark enough anywhere near here at all. So I'm going to make a brave move and go in with black very lightly though, like barely touching the surface, just to darken up because I don't really have a brown that is really, really dark. As I said, being super careful. It's quite a weird line here. Just add that in. Um, okay, and then we're going to reintroduce the dark around here. Not too much though because obviously we just put all that I just put all that red down. But in the corner or on the outside should I say. You do ooh, ooh. <laughs> You do want to make it quite dark. I've not got used to my phone being so close to my pencils yet. And this is actually all blended down here, so do that and then go back and burn the car main just to blend that out a bit. And then just add in some sharp lines um, on the black just to really Honestly, just create the layers in the eye. Um, creating those will make a big difference. I'm going to go in with chocolate and then start working on the dark. No, I'm not. <laughs> We're going to go in with something darker than chocolate. Uh, I'm going to go in graphite grey, actually. From the Derwent. If I can find it. There you go. Um, starting not too dark but just blending the uh, more orangey tones together with the middle of the eye which is obviously going to be a lot darker um, but I am actually going to go in with uh, seal and go a little bit up here because that should not be that light up there at all. Uh, we're going to be careful up here though because there is a reflection of eyelashes however I just need to make the whole area darker. Before much happens up there. Um, one thing on dog's eyes as well is that even the darkest parts, the very outer edge of the eye, so like around here, um, there can sometimes be really bright highlights. Um, and I do this in quite a lot of my drawings just because it I know, makes it look a little bit more real. So I'm going to go in with this light orange pit pastel Ooh. around here and just do like a really light really small little wave <sighs> like that <sighs> um, and that then contrasted with everything else make it just pop
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with all of this round here. Um, granted, it should be a lot more red and a lot deeper. However, I can't do that, so. Going with the burnt carmine again. Carmine. Um, Cause this is all quite ready around here. I'm going to go in with the black and the pencil extender and just because this corner is really dark but obviously this is the darkest part all up here so you don't want to make this the same darkness as up there but still pretty dark and then I'm just going to start working on the so all of this is really dark. We don't need to pay much attention to that. Actually, in fact, I'm just gonna do that. Um, now this bit up here is not as dark as black at all, but I'm still gonna just darken it up with the black. Um, all up So that's obviously made quite a bit of a drastic change. However, as I said, I mean, this is all pretty much dark <sighs> and black. I mean, I think I might add just in a little bit of dark blue. Um, so I'm going to use the... Uh, what is this? 151 dark blue pit pastel. Just because in some areas like down here there is the tiniest bit of blue and this blue is too vibrant really uh, for what I'm doing right now. However we will make that a little bit more subtle and it's all quite blue up here as well and all around here. Um, but I'm going to go in with my graphite grey and we'll just make that a little bit less subtle and all up here as well just kind of more blending the blue into everything else using circular motions again Okay, and then I think we're now oh, I'm just gonna get grab burnt carmine again, and just make this slightly more subtle, a bit more purpley rather than blue, really. And also in this top corner of whatever this is in the reflection. <sighs> That's not completely black. Um, okay. <sighs> so then the last thing I'm going to do for um, the sepia colour around the eye is grab a lighter colour. I'm going to use this pink from the Pit Pastels 132 um, and really carefully just bring out some of the lightest lightest bits but this has to be like minute because otherwise it would just look a bit odd <laughs> so I'm barely pressing down on the paper I'm making almost little scribbles and up here there's quite a lot as well just to 
continue giving just more depth and layers in the eye. Okay, so I feel like that bit is pretty much done. I'm gonna work on this bit now quickly. Uh, this won't take too long. I'm just gonna take a cold gray. Um, I like cold gray. And blend it out. Um, and actually this has got a tiny bit of light blue in it. So I'm gonna take the uh, design pastel in 15, the light blue color. 51, sorry, not 15. Um, and just take that literally tiny amounts of pressure on there. And that will actually blend in. <sighs> like that. And then I'm going to focus on the uh, darks in here now. So I'm going to use Graphite Grey, Derwin, and just kind of block in all of the reflections. Um, now in the reference, the reflections are pretty obvious to what they are. They are obviously windows. However, I try and almost don't make them as detailed as they should be. Um, just because who really needs to know they're all windows? <sighs> but obviously don't make them like just squiggles. But I'm not gonna put in like the hedges in the windows outside and everything. But there is a lovely green, so I am gonna add that in. Um, I'm gonna hunt. Okay, so this is the 173 Pit Pastel. And I'm just gonna kind of block in all of the greens in here. Problem is we're getting to pretty small um, a pretty small area to work with, so I don't want to make it too detailed. But obviously, you don't want to, as I said, just put squiggles. So there's quite a bit of darkness up here, but don't make you know completely black. And then all around here as well. down here I mean it's not very light the reflection um, the only really light bits are the bright blues but everything else is all pretty dark it's annoying <laughs> Here's me doing my classic flicking back and forth, just fiddling with things that I feel I like need to be a bit darker. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just gonna go in with an um, even darker green if I have one. Um, well, it doesn't look like I do. Okay, so I'm just going to go in with a different coloured green. This 
one's a bit more of like a grassy green colour. Um, this is 167. And we're just going to add a bit more variation to these trees in colour, just so it's not just one flat green. Um, and at this point, I'm not minding too much going over the black because, as I said, with pastel you can just go back over everything, so not too bothered. Um, and then I'm going to, first of all, sharpen this pencil because it's getting very small and I'm struggling. <laughs> And I'm just going to start putting in the sky um, through the windows. This is going to be probably like the main bit of the eye that will draw people's attention to it because it's a shine or a reflection. And um, it's obviously the lightest bit, so you just want to be careful and... Obviously, um, as I said, I've never drawn, done a commission with an eye this big. So, if there's, if I would um, have this reference as a commission, it'd be a lot smaller, and I probably would not pack as much detail into it. So going with just titanium white, and I want, and just really pick out those highlights. And we're going to go back in with the black because it's just all a bit too small to really get. But okay, so I'm going to go back in with the black as I said. And just sort out all of these window frames. Um, there's one thing that I've just decided. I think it is a bit too dark. Um, so I'm going to go in with a dark blue. Um, this one. Pet Pastel uh, 151. And... Kind of bring it a bit blue to this. I think ooh, the ceiling's a bit dark, and especially here. So I'm gonna put the blue into it and then go in with just maybe like a grey, um, just to make it all a bit lighter. So I'm going to go in with the grey, uh, I'm just going to go in with the, what is it, it's 273, oh no I'm not because that's completely blunt, this one, oh it's another 273, uh, Pit Pasto. a bit lighter. Um, I do think the trees however are a bit too light so I'm probably gonna go in and sort them out but I just made the ceiling all a bit too dark so <sighs> um, and then I'm just gonna grab seal in the dough and, and just kind of darken up 
the green slightly just because I want more of the uh, reflection to be focused on the white rather than the green so that's good Okay, and then I'm gonna go in actually with um, the Museum Aquarel pencil that I said earlier, just for the really white highlights. Um, just because this pencil works wonders. However, you cannot go over um, <sighs> colors pencil with pastel. So if I do go over any of the black lines, which I have, I'm gonna have to go in with a black colored pencil just to fix that. Uh, okay, so the black colored pencil, I'm just gonna use the polychromo in black very lightly because coloured pencil will create a shine if you do press down too hard or whatever um let's get carried away now so there's that um, now i'm just going to focus on the eyelashes quickly and then the main chunk of the eye will be done i'll use that one uh, so there is some like small light sections between the eyelashes so I'm just going to pretty much vaguely fill them in and then go over black over the top it's quite light over here and then go in with my black pit pastel um, and blend in the bits that need to be blended in so there's a bit here that needs to be blended but a lot of it's actually quite sharp lines so you can differentiate the outer eye Okay, and then for the eyelashes, it's really light pressure. Just doing some lines. make a few of those sections in between the eyelashes a bit more prominent but nothing too crazy um, it's a really weird light line here another one here Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the eye. I, I'm just gonna tweak this slightly. I feel like it's a bit too pink and not dark enough. So I'm just gonna go in with the gray. And then a slightly darker eye, so graphite gray. And just darken up a little, little bit.
Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with the black. Um, and really just kind of tweak any bits that maybe I might have lent on or maybe the black isn't as dark as I'd like it to be. Like here I've lent on this quite a bit so you can see. Um, and I'm also just gonna darken up down here. And also I'm going to make this bigger because it is bigger than what I've drawn out. And putting in the dark and then in comparison to all the light there around it really does make quite a difference. Um, just giving it contrast and everything. Back down here. I am going to do a tiny bit of the fur, I think, just to almost frame it, but nothing crazy. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of really roughly block in all the darks here because uh, it is definitely dark, but not completely. And then I'm gonna get that waterline in to then just make it look really shiny. So I'm gonna take a really sharp uh, or with a really sharp point, a uh, grey pencil, and I'm probably going to go very silent, but just draw in that tiny little waterline. <sighs> I've gone a bit over there, so we'll sort that in a second. Okay, and I'm going to go with the black and just go right under that line I made. Just make it pure black and fix the bit I went a bit over on. Blend that into the red or oh, sepia, whatever. Um, and then I'm going to go with titanium white again. Really sharp. That's not really sharp at all. <laughs> The other one. Oh, one sharper. Okay, and then I'm gonna attempt to put in the shine in the waterline. Although I might go in with my um, the watercolor pencil, the Aquarel Museum one, so for like deep concentration. Oh, that is an example of what not to do. I pressed away too hard and the pencil and the pastel snapped. It's okay, I've got another one back up. So there's quite a few highlights over here as well. I 
Um, I'm actually gonna go back in here quickly and just make the around the window is quite dark just to really make the light that's coming out of them pop Ideally, I'd like it to look a little bit more shinier than what it looks. Um, but, I don't know. I'm okay, I'm quite happy with this. And I'm going to go with Burn Carmine again. And focus all around here. This is the perfect colour for what's going on down here. Um, and then just mixing that in with the black as well. To go all the way down here. However, I'm not sure where I'm going to stop this completely. Um, and then it's actually also up here as well. Kind of this dark reddish colour. And down here. This is covered in hair, um, and I'll probably do that in a minute. I'm just going to focus on this bit for now. Um, I'm going to go in with the light grey, there it is and just kind of scribble almost um, I don't really know how to oh here's me going in with other stupid things again I'm back in with the grey um, and yeah just kind of doing little scribbles little dots and everything and then I'm just going to do that fur that I said was up here Just doing really one quick thing. Just going in. Oh, just going in with a cream. Just up here. Because I've made it a bit too grey. I'm just going to take the light blue again of the design pastels and just add that to the highlights right in the corner. I'm going to add a little bit down here again as well. I feel like we I lost that. Oh, maybe that's a bit too much. <laughs> okay, back in with the black. I could probably spend all day going over that. It's just too small to really do anything with. Um, and I'm going to do the same here, which is probably a bad idea. Just kind of separate a few of those reflections. Um, and then blend out the black a little bit. Add some black just in between these hairs down here, keeping it all very contrasting, obviously. Um, I'm actually going to use uh, the flesh diamond pencil just to bring out the lightest ones again. So down here I am going to do just a little bit of hair, 
Um, but I'm gonna go in with the black just to do like a base layer because I'm gonna layer the hair on top. Because it goes black, light, black. Um, I've been deciding throughout this whole portrait whether I'm going to draw the hair or not. I think I will. I will do a, port a tutorial showing you how I do hair and pasta as well and probably coloured pencil. I'm just going to take a rubber though because it's getting all a bit messy. Um, and obviously this isn't a commission but if it was then you don't want it getting messy. That is one of the downside of pasta is that it does obviously smudge and if you uh, rest your hand on it. So yeah I've done the black and I'm going to take Burnt Carmaine. It's my favourite pencil in this tutorial. And just blend out the black a little bit. Just make it, give it a bit purple. And then I'm also going to give it a bit of blue. Because right, it's quite bluey. Alexa, set my timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And then I'm going to start going lighter and lighter. So we're going to start with the grey and doing the squiggles. I probably should have done all of this before I did the squiggles the first time. But hey ho. <laughs> and getting up here, they kind of become less squiggles and more like whole shapes, I suppose. I'm not worrying too much about the bottom down here because that will eventually be covered by hair. But all up here, just do the squiggles. There's a couple of little light spots here as well. I'm still not happy with this. I feel like it's now just too yellow. So as I said earlier, sometimes you just have to change the reference photo a tiny bit. Um, in which I'm about to do. I'm gonna go in with the rust colour and then just a dark brown. <sighs> oh, that's oh, a lot better. I'm actually just gonna go in with a little bit of black just to get a bit darker. Yeah, I prefer that a lot more than what it was. Um, even though it maybe doesn't match the reference 100%. Okay, and I'm gonna go in really carefully, not with the white that I snapped, but the other white and just scribble tiny bits. Like that. Um, okay. And then I'm gonna take a burn carmine again. If I can find it. There it is. Um, and just up here, this is not very practical with my phone, but just kind of blocking a bit up here. And then go into black and just blend that out slightly just like that
going in doing stupid stuff that I probably shouldn't be doing. <laughs> uh, okay, so now I'm just going to add a bit more contrast, just spot some black all down here. This is a bit too bright, so I'm just going to do that. Okay. Pretty happy with that. Um, maybe just add a touch more blue. Just down here. All right, I think I'm pretty much done with the actual eye. Um, I'm just going to do the fur, however, I'm going to time lapse that. Um, I will have another tutorial done on how to draw fur in colour pencils, so that might not be up yet, or maybe for a little while, however, it will be soon. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you do draw it, I can post the reference, um, I'll link it in the description, and you can have a go yourself. I mean, I'd love, love, love to see your efforts. Uh, thank you so much for watching and subscribe for more, like the video and everything. Uh, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.